The second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter. It's the lectionary gospel, which means it's not only being used in the sanctuary, but by Christian congregations around the world today. So you might see it up on marquees around town, sermon titles that are drawing from this text, or there's lots up on social media about it too. And we're sharing in it also. Um, it's two kind of bookends from the sixth chapter. Um, the uh, lectionary scholars have suggested these two passages can fit together because they talk about a particular context of Jesus' ministry. Next week, we've got the feeding of the 5,000 and the miracle of Jesus walking on water. And last week, uh, we had the beheading of John the Baptist. But this week, it's a quieter tone to the text. Hear the word of the Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns that arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gesineret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people began at once to recognize him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A uh, gospel passage that brings us, coupled particularly with the passages Nicole read at the beginning about Sabbath from Genesis, these passages that bring us this emphasis on rest, and today's passages do that, all right, they're a good time for us to be aware of all of the people we see, not only in the community, but the world around us, who don't get the rest, whose work is oppressive, who are working out in the heat all summer long, who don't have the opportunity for renewal or restoration, who are working two jobs to make ends meet. I think these passages are a chance for us to be aware of them and to look for ways that we can express compassion or care for them. And one of those is certainly to hold them in our prayers. So I lift that up here as a part of my own reaction to this passage. But it's about rest. And one of the things it talks about is Jesus going on a trip. Not a long trip, but a short trip for rest. He sent the apostles out, and he sent them out by twos. They're not carrying a lot. They're traveling light, and they have gone to share in the healings and to share in the teaching. They've gone to all the little different villages there around Galilee. And now after that season, he's called them back to him, and he's encouraging them to rest for a while, come apart, and by yourselves and rest for a while. He wants to get in a boat, take them on a boat trip to a retreat place, to a, a deserted place, the text says. So I've seen you going on trips this summer. And I've seen the pictures you've posted on social media, and some of it looks very renewing. Trips to the beach or to lakes or uh, places where you've gone in the mountains as you've tried to find uh, opportunities to renew yourself. So most of that looks like it's been away by yourselves for a while, if not a deserted place, a place apart from the crowd and your regular activities. Uh, and it looks like it's been a blessing. I, I think the scriptures are calling us into that intentionality about rest and renewal, and I've enjoyed looking at your stories across the summer. And Jesus takes the apostles apart here, and I think we all can identify with that feeling of being depleted. That's part of why we embrace summer because our own cups get empty from the regular routines, and we set apart from those teens for a while. 
Um, this text just seems very connected with the cultural patterns that we live with here in this place of seasons of renewal and summer. Verse 31, Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. Have you ever been that busy? So busy that you didn't even have time to eat? In the 80s, I was the associate pastor here, and uh, I thought I was very busy. I'm not sure if I was as busy as I thought I was, but I was very impressed with my own busyness. <laughs> And, and um, I was uh, headed out after a day of work to the Presbyterian Conference Center on the Alify River, which is a place apart, kind of a wholly deserted place meant for renewal. But we were having a committee meeting uh, out there because it was a central location. And um, we, the meeting was designed so that we would arrive at supper time, and dinner at Cedar Kirk is a blessed thing there in the dining hall. We were going to be able to eat with the campers uh, who were there with someone else having fixed a hot meal. But I was running in uh, late because I was so busy. And I got there uh, too late for dinner. I came through the dining room and was going straight down to the room where my committee meeting was going. But as, as I went through the room, the director of Cedar Kirk, a guy named A.T. Brown, some of you remember A.T. Brown. He was sort of the bear of a fella. As I went through the room on my way to the meeting, he grabbed me by the arm. All right, and, and it wasn't just a love grab. It was a strong grab. He stopped me, and he said to me, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going down to the committee meeting. It's down in the room downstairs. And he said, but you haven't had anything to eat. And I said, yeah, but I'm running late, and i got to get down there. And he pulled me by that arm to a table and sat me down and motioned to some helpers in the room to bring the dinner tray over to me. And then he leaned over and got close to my face, and he said to me, who do you think you are? <laughs> he may have said something like, who in the heck do you think you are? <laughs> it was a powerful moment for me. We all need rest. Jesus said to the disciples, come away to a deserted place and rest a while. They were so busy, they didn't even have leisure to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves with him. But note what happens. As they're traveling in this boat, quote, verse 33, many people saw them going and recognized him. And they hurried there on foot to meet him there. And others arrived from towns ahead of him. And they brought their sick and those who needed attention with them. Can you imagine that? As he arrived at this retreat spot, there all of this work had run ahead of him, literally around the side of the lake, to get there first and to meet him. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. What would that be like? Can you empathize with that feeling? I mean, it's like you drive up to your beach condo, and there your supervisor has FedExed a big box of paperwork for you to do as you're there already, right? Or you're um, working at a restaurant, and closing time is 9 o'clock, and the restaurant's just about empty, and at 2 minutes till 9, Pastor John with his big family enters, all right, and goes and sits down at a table waiting to be served. All right? Or... At 7 o'clock at night, when you're ready to be done for the day, you get a text asking you if you could sign on to a Zoom meeting, right? Or you're coming home and you're ready just to sit down for a bit, and you enter a room that's full of unexpected laundry and dirty dishes and a lot of picking up to do. And you feel discouraged, fatigued, and maybe even angry. Um, fatigue is one of the things that depletes us. And discouragement can also deplete us. And it can make us feel like we're going to give up or even give out, just break altogether. So maybe you can empathize with the feelings the apostles and Jesus might have had here. But what does the text say Jesus did? Verse 34, as he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them. The, the Greek word here is a verb that says he had compassion, and it came out from him from his visceral area. It's as if it comes out 
from his self physiologically coming, growing up out of his heart. And they feel, as he sees them, his heart grows full of care. He had compassion because it says they were like sheep without a shepherd. Now, do you think um, seeing need empowers energy? Is that your experience? And sometimes it does. Sometimes seeing need can bring forward energy from us, but not always, right? If, especially not if we just see it repetitively over and over again. We give out, and we might give up. But the text is telling us here, Jesus is different. Jesus is God, and God's compassion doesn't give out. That's the gospel. God's compassion doesn't give out in the face of your need or in the face of the need of others, even as you may see their overwhelming need. As you face the overwhelming need that you see around you, it can cause you to give up. But the good news of the gospel is that God's compassion does not give out, and it is activated by need. But you are God. You're human. You need to rest. God knows this, and that's why you remember the verses from Genesis and Exodus where God creates Sabbath, a time of rest, because God knows that we are human and need this rest. They were like sheep without a shepherd. Shepherd is a most of the time a leadership metaphor in the Bible, particularly the Hebrew scriptures. There's a lot of references to that. And maybe here in chapter 6, the story that you had last week where John the Baptist is beheaded by Herod, maybe that's a story of um, a leader who had no shepherding care for the people in contraposition to this story now next to it about Jesus who has shepherding care for the people. Jesus is the shepherd who cares for them. Herod is the shepherd who had abandoned them. They were abandoned. But Jesus, even in the face of depletion, doesn't abandon them. And the text says, he began to teach them many things. To teach them. Education is often an antidote to need. And he heals them. He heals them. It's direct, physical change brought about by his power and intervention. And, and in this text also, you're going to see it next week, he feeds them. He addresses their physical need. So I think the scripture is teaching us something else here. Not only that we need rest, even when the crowd is waiting for us, but it's also teaching us that we find renewal in the presence and person of Christ. Don't try to always deal with depletion by simply gutting it out. Don't try to always deal with depletion by just pushing through. Sometimes that'll work for a bit, but it won't work repetitively. All right? At some point, you're going to give out. Deal with depletion by drawing close to Jesus. Even in the midst of the storm, that's coming next week. Deal with complete depletion by drawing close to Jesus. That's what the people in the text do here. It says they drew near him. They brought their sick to him, their problems to him, close enough to touch him, even to touch the hem of his garment. Deal with depletion by drawing close to Jesus. How do you draw close to Jesus? Well, you talk to Nicole about that. I mean it seriously. She knows something right now about drawing close to Jesus, all right? How do you draw close to Jesus? Well, you talk to Jonathan Hughes about that. He knows something about it. He does. All right? How do you draw close to Jesus? What I'm saying here is you, you talk to each other about that. You have knowledge to share. Talk to Allison Kelly. She's leading a class next on ways in which we nurture our faith and draw close to Jesus. Talk with one another about how we do this. I'm telling you it involves prayer. It certainly involves scripture. It certainly involves intentionality and rest. But you share this news with one another, this information. But drawing close to Jesus, this story is teaching us 
That restores awareness. It renews promise. It generates hope. Drawing close to Christ restores awareness of his loving presence. Drawing close to Christ renews awareness of his promise that we are not abandoned. Drawing close to Christ nurtures the generous hope that he will overcome adversity. You draw close to Christ when you are depleted. That is where we find our renewal. You know, in the sanctuary, we're going to uh, end this moment by singing a song. And I didn't use it here at the connection because I didn't think Roger would know it. <laughs> it's an old hymn. But uh, he told me coming in, I could have sung that. I saw that you were singing it in there. We could have sung that hymn. I know it. Maybe you know it too. All right? It goes like this. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee near to the heart of God. That's where you'll find renewal, near to the heart of God. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you understand that we are your people, your creatures, and that we need rest. We pray for those for whom rest never seems to come. Oh, Lord, have mercy, and in your compassion, bring care for them and use us in some way to help meet their needs. We pray for those around us and their needs for renewal and restoration. We pray for ourselves. May in this season of summer, even in what remains of it, may your spirit fill us up that we might serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.